Welcome to the City of Southfield interviews for the 2021 November election. Today is Thursday, November 30th. These interviews will be featuring the candidates who have filed for Southfield Mayor, Clerk, and City Council. There are two candidates for Mayor, vote for one, for a four-year term. There are two candidates for City Clerk, vote for one, for a four-year term. And there are eight candidates for City Council, vote for four. The three highest vote totals receive a four-year term and the fourth highest vote total receives a two-year term. Sponsor of this form is the League of Women Voters Oakland area. I am Judy Bateman, a member of the League of Women Voters. I am not a resident of this district. The League of Women Voters is a trusted national nonpartisan political organization. Our members do the hands-on work to safeguard democracy. While we never endorse a candidate we, are, candidate, we are directly involved in shaping the important issues that keep our community strong. As a League of Women Voters member, I have the opportunity to contribute in a leadership role such as this one that has great impact on local, state, and even national issues. If you are interested in learning how you can make a similar impact, I would encourage you to go to the League of Women Voters Oakland Area website at lwvoa.org for information on becoming a member. The League of Women Voters does not endorse any candidate or political party. The views expressed in these interviews are those of the candidates and sponsors take no responsibility. The format for these interviews has been established by the League of Women Voters. We ask the candidates answer the questions with their views only. The format is as follows. All candidates will be given one minute for an opening statement and a closing statement will also be one minute. Candidates will have one minute each for three questions submitted to them in advance. All candidates for these offices have been invited. Our host and timer is Deborah Horner. The candidates for Southfield Mayor are Tanya Morris and Kenson Seibel. We will, we will begin the uh, interviews for Mayor with Ms. Tanya Morris. Ms. Morris, you can start with your opening statement. Good evening, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting the candidate interviews. My name is Tanya Morris, and I uh, served as a councilwoman for the past five and a half years just like to share a few of my accomplishments. I actively led the city council in a vote to amend the Southfield City Charter and put an end to what I believed uh, to be voter suppression by reinstating voters' rights and bringing back primary election voting in our city. I wrote a resolution to help homeowners avoid losing their homes through an unfair foreclosure process. And I wrote a resolution to make hiring, hiring processes more open and inclusive. I'm running for mayor uh, of Southfield because I believe our city has become stagnant and I want to use my leadership skills, uh, my technical knowledge and experience while on council to make our city more efficient, uh, more transparent, uh, more welcoming, inclusive and position for progress into the future. Thank you. We'll start now with question number one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? Okay, thank you. Uh, to be clear, the city no longer has site control of Northland. Since we don't own the land, we cannot control its development. However, that's why it's extremely important for the citizens to elect, elect me as mayor. I can utilize my technical aptitude as an engineer to keep a watchful eye on the project and make sure it is built correctly and that it is built to scope with quality materials and workmanship. There is no room for error on this project. It is very important. Uh, it's a, a very important development in our city. And uh, to further support the project, the city has partnered with uh, MEDC, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, to secure brownfield monies and other incentives to reduce the cost of development. Uh, I believe the city should also continue to meet monthly with the developer. We want to make sure that uh, what's built is what we contracted for. Uh, as a former member of the Northland Committee, these meetings can be used to assess and monitor the developer's progress. In addition, I plan to conduct site visits and continue to maintain a great working relationship with the developer to make sure the resident's vision comes to a fruition. Very good, thank you. Question two, what can be done about improving the roads and attracting new residents? Well, since I was elected to city council in 2015, uh, the city of Southfield has spent over $70 million in the reconstruction and repavement of close to 70 miles of major local major and local roads. Uh, so improvements are being made, uh, but we need to do more. This year, the city received $100 million, $10 million, I'm sorry, from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, we could use these funds on sewer improvements, which could also support road repairs. 
Uh, also, the, the city had a budget surplus uh, this past fiscal year, and we could use some of our funding surplus to support residential street improvements. I know this is something that uh, is important to many of the residents, so it's one of my top priorities. Uh, finally, uh, President Biden's infrastructure bill, uh, when passed, can provide additional funding to also help improve our roads. To attract new residents, I believe we need to provide a more affordable housing options. Uh, we need to strategically market our city, our schools, our parks, our services, uh, and we need to improve upon quality of life concerns such as the beautification and sanctity of our neighborhoods, um, the safety in our schools, and provide more recreation and entertainment options for individuals and families like movie theaters and, of course, our annual fireworks. We need to bring those back. I remember that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, question number three. Comment on any budget, climate, or public safety issue that is important to you. Sure, sure. Well, all of those are important to me, but we must maintain a safe and secure community uh, with responsive public safety officers that know and care about the people they are sworn to protect and serve. In the city of Southfield, 30% of our police force is eligible to retire next year. Uh, we currently have 125 officers on the force, and we know we're losing 16 officers in the next two years. So this is an issue that we have to deal with. I've spoken with our police chief, Chief Barron, with an interest in helping him develop a recruitment strategy that prioritizes training and hiring locally police officers that are from our city, that live in our city. Um, I will also continue to support our, our fire chief, Chief Menifee, uh, in his efforts to train local high school students to become certified public safety officials, such as firemen and emergency medical technicians. I believe it's important to have public servants that reflect the public they serve. Thank you. Okay. And now we come to the end and you have an, another minute to wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you, League of Women Voters and anyone who was listening to this interview. Again, my name is Tanya Morris and I'm running for mayor of the city of Southfield. I'm a proud Southfield High graduate. I am a wife. I am a mother of three beautiful, smart children. I am a homeowner. I've been here raising my family, uh, volunteering in various capacities and serving my community for the past 30 years. Uh, while on city council for five and a half years, I served on all seven of the council subcommittees, uh, having chaired the Neighborhood Services Committee and the Economic Development Committee. I also served as council president pro tem. I believe I represent the best of Southfield. I'm the most capable and willing to fight for our residents and prioritize their needs and concerns. I always put people first. I present the best vision and strategies to lead us into a prosperous future for everyone, not just for some, but for all. I ask you for your vote November 2nd. To learn more about me, you can visit my website at Morris for Mayor, the number four, mayor.com, or on my social media channels on Facebook at Committee to Elect Tanya Morris, Instagram, Tanya Morris for Mayor, number four, and Twitter, Morris at Morris for Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We want to thank you for coming and for your participation, and, and good luck to the second candidate for mayor, Kenson Cyber. Uh, Mr. Syver, would you start with your opening remarks? Yes. Hello, everyone. I am a public servant, not a politician. Most people know me as Ken. My entire adult, adult life, 54 years, has been wrapped up in service to this community as an educator, a community activist, volunteer, and elected leader. My motivation has always been how to make this a better community, to uphold standards so as to maintain Southfield as a great place to live, work, worship, recreate. My commitment to my fellow citizens plays out as teacher, founding member of MLK Task Force and the Parks and Garden Club, and through longtime involvement in the Goodfellows, the nonprofit housing board, the Historical Society, Magnolia Neighborhood Association, the Friends of South of Public Arts, the Big Rake, Rock the Block, Garden Walk, my brother's keeper, and many, many more uh, activities. I work daily to build community and connectedness. My extensive experience knowledge and interactions with various consistent uh, constituencies has fostered great collaborations for the benefit of all Southfield residents. Thank you. Okay, now we get to question one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? 
Northland has been sold to contour companies and redevelopment has begun. However, we remain very involved in this private public partnership. In fact, city government and the DDA are tied to Northland's rebirth for the next 18 years. That's the repayment period for 64 million in brownfield tax credits. The city has to monitor the eligible activities of the Brownfield Redevelopment Financing Act. Of every dollar uh, captured, the DDA will receive 15 cents, city 40 uh, cents, developer 45 cents. And this is only for phase one uh, of the Northland redevelopment. A second phase has yet to be worked out. The last thing we want is project acreage to sit vacant uh, for, for years to come. Southwood will work with Contour to leverage other tax credits, including opportunity zone funding and new market. Further, we will oversee the work uh, to ensure compliance with our overlay development district requirements and our, our design standards. Okay, thank you. Now, this question two, what can be done about improving roads and attracting new residents? Well, since 2015, the city has been on an aggressive infrastructure rebuilding program. By December, we will have spent 228 million on roads, sewer, water main bridge, and sidewalk replacement. While this figure is impressive, we probably need another 200 million to complete the work required for neighborhood streets. To the city's credit, we have and must continue to be aggressive in securing grant funds. Uh, in the last five years, we have stretched our road dollars by over 30 million in grants. Our challenge going forward, however, is the exhaustion of the $99 million road bond. Uh, we have to tap new revenue sources to complete our road building needs. We are encouraged that Governor Whitmer has nearly tripled road funding in the 2022 budget to 3.2 billion. We are working with Congresswoman Lawrence, who has secured funding for two road projects, um, Mount Vernon Street and 12 Mile west of Telegraph to Northwestern. Okay, good, thank you. Question three, comment on any budget, climate, or public safety issue that is important to you. I believe in climate change. Change In my recent meetings and Zoom calls with DTE officials, I have expressed that the severe weather uh, events that we've experienced for the past decade plus are no longer aberrations. Uh, I am advocating three um, uh, changes in tree trimming. One, go wider and lower when clearing power lines. Current tree trimming standards leave too many branches near the power lines. Secondly, remove weed or high growth trees completely between power uh, under the below the power lines, especially if trimming is only going to be done every five or six years. And thirdly, the company needs to clear feeder lines that run to homes as private tree companies are reluctant or actually refuse to trim trees with electrical lines running through them. Jerry Norcia, the president and CEO of DTE, has asked to meet with me on October 21st following several TV interviews I have done in which I have conveyed the frustrations of my Southfield constituents with this utility. Thank you. We come to the end, and now you have a minute to uh, for your closing remarks. As your mayor for the past six years, councilman for 14 and school administrator, I believe in excellent customer service. Approachable and responsive, I answered people daily. Uh, if you contact me, you'll get a response. I perform my service to this community as a good listener with empathy and respect for each individual. I am asking you to renew my contract with the people of Southfield. I will continue the initiatives to create new housing, improve our roads and infrastructure, see the Northland City Center uh, project become a reality, create a more vibrant and walkable city, assist our older residents age in place, hold DTE accountable for power outages and its lack of investment. I'm also committed to attracting young people to Southfield. And we'll do this through affordable housing, good paying jobs, recreation, dining, and entertainment options. I ask you to renew my contract so that we may keep Southfield the safe and attractive city we all enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. Okay. Thank you. The candidates for city clerk in Southfield are Sharika Hawkins and Wendy Webster Jackson.
We're going to start with Ms. Hawkins. Ms. Hawkins, you have a minute for your opening remarks. Uh, good evening, everyone uh, in virtual land. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I am Shrika L. Hawkins, your Southfield City Clerk. And first, I would like to thank Deborah and Judy and all the stakeholders and the Women League of Voters for making this possible. I truly appreciate the work you do year in and year out, making sure that voters are informed. Um, tonight, I am very excited to be here to talk about the accomplishments that I've had in my first term, to elaborate a little bit more on that, and then to also touch upon some of the goals that I have um, if elected to a second term. Um, I've made numerous uh, improvements to the clerk's office in my first term, streamlining uh, services so they could be more accessible, looking at things that could get better. Anytime you go into an office, um, improvements are continuous and how things change, you wanna make sure that you're open and you're honest with yourself to make the changes that are most serve the people here um, in the city of Southfield. And I'm very excited um, to make those changes and some of the changes that I've made uh, residents have really uh, taken heed and, and love those changes. So I am grateful to be here and grateful to continually to serve uh, the Southfield residents. Very good, thank you, very good. Uh, question one, how will you ensure that elections are fair? I think it, that's a question that uh, can break down into a lot of different components. I think the first thing is to make sure that the voters are informed. When you have an informed voter, they're able to discern the truth from a lie. Um, they're also able to know the process of voting and their rights as a voter. Um, on top of that, I think it's important to make sure we are active in voter engagement. Uh, you need to make sure that your election equipment has been properly tested. That comes with a public accuracy test. So individuals that wanna see the process are more than welcome to come to that. So you wanna make sure that you have that properly um, put on notice so that people can come and be a part of it because that may alleviate some questions that they may have. Um, you also wanna make sure you're following state and federal guidelines. Um, one of another key component is just making sure that you recruit and hire an efficient number of election workers. Um, you wanna make sure that those election workers are properly trained and that they're properly compensated. And then lastly, you just wanna make sure your polling locations are adequately assigned throughout the city um, for uh, and that they're equitable. I think those are a few things, we could talk about this for a long period of time, but those are just a few points that I can elaborate on with that. Okay, thank you. Question two, how will services be accessible and timely for residents? I think with Southfield, um, Southfield does have an aging population, but we also have a newer generation that's moving in. So you have to really uh, bridge, bridge, bridge the gap between those. So in my first time as clerk, I've made things more accessible being online. Now you can apply for Freedom of Information Act requests online. Um, you also can apply to speak at a city council meeting online, but in doing that and making things more streamlined with the internet, you also still have to make sure that you have paper. Some people like paper, you have to make sure that that paper is accessible if they need something to print it out. And then you have to continue to make sure that your customer service is on point when you have individuals that are coming to your office and residents and stakeholders and business owners to make sure they're getting the proper um, care of the needs that they want. You know, the clerk's office is the Google. A lot of times people come to the clerk's office looking for other things. So you want to make sure that you know those things and point them in the right direction, all while giving them the top-notch service that they deserve. So I think it's, again, that's another continuous point. We look at the services that we provide and we look at the demographics that we're providing those services to, and we best try to see fit how we can uh, make sure that everyone involved feels that they're getting the best services possible. Okay, and yeah, that kind of leads us into question three. Comment on any other issue that might improve services in the clerk's office. I think it's a, it's a number of things. Obviously, you know, you, you have things that each year you have capital improvements that you can make with the clerk's office. Um, with that being uh, this past year, we had a pandemic, so we had to make things COVID friendly, <laughs> if that makes any sense, uh, spacing things out. So you have to be, Flexible, I'm willing right now, and I'm, I'm excited about just making sure that people feel comfortable coming into City Hall, because we're still, believe it or not, 18 months and in a pandemic. Um, I think other um, services that we can improve on is just constantly, I'm looking at getting some new technology for our Freedom of Information Act to make that a little bit um, better. And then we're also looking at, uh, we recently implemented under my first term, an uh, online module for boards and commissions so people can apply to be on a board and commission online and they can see the other members that are 
on that uh, on those boards and commissions. Uh, so just things like that. I think that every day different technology comes out, different things come out. You just have to make sure that you're abreast of those things, and you have to make sure that you're moving forward to um, provide the best technology and the services possible uh, for our great residents here in the city of Southfield. Okay, thank you. We come to the end and now you have another minute to wrap it up. Well, um, I really enjoyed being the Southfield city clerk for my first term. We've done a lot of great things um, under my leadership. We've had multiple record voter turnouts. Uh, we've been able to, as I alluded to before, put applications for um, boards and commissions online. Uh, we were also able to put the request for the Freedom of Information Act online. Um, other forms that were not available online, we put those online. We really put a lot of effort into putting as much information as possible on our website so that people, if they don't want to call, they'll be able to click a link and find that information right, right there. Moving forward, I'm looking to possibly having a um, feature where we can text you go to different websites and if you can't call you can text in questions so we're looking at a feature for that just trying to be convenient as possible people are very busy nowadays so we're trying to be innovative um, and uh, spend the taxpayers dollars in the most responsible way so that we can move forward and i um appreciate the time this evening and i hope based on the information that i provided that um I will have your vote moving forward as the Southfield City Clerk for my second term, and I approve this message. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your participation. Thank you. All right. No. The next candidate for clerk in Southfield is Dr. Wendy Webster Jackson. And Dr. Webster Jackson, you may now begin with your opening statement. Hello, thank you so much for having me here today. I am Dr. Wendy Webster Jackson and I am the candidate for Southfield City Clerk. I am a Southfield business owner for over uh, 20 years. I am a longtime Southfield resident and I want to be your next clerk. I am running to be Southfield Clerk because there was a problem and this uh, residents of Southfield deserve to have confidence in their clerk's office. Um, as we know, or you may not know, there was a problem in 2018. And as of this point, I just want to come in and restore the integrity and confidence in the clerk's office for the residents of Southfield. Thank you. This is question one. How will you ensure that elections are fair? Well, as when I am elected, I will immediately get certified with the state of Michigan's election uh they have certification classes that you're supposed to take as soon as you become clerk i will ensure that i complete those classes and also i feel in order to be have fair elections you need to be an unbiased person so i my i strongly believe that everyone has that right to vote and every vote should be counted so whether you're democrat republican independent libertarian your voice deserves to be heard. So I want to be that person. So I will uh, make sure that everyone has all the, all of the records are balanced, all of the absentee votes that come in balanced with the applications that are sent. And I will just make sure because I'm a fair person inherently, I just will turn that over into the election and as far as my job, but I will make sure everything is balanced. Thank you. Thank you. Question two, how will services be accessible and timely for residents? Well, what I would like to do is to make sure, because we do have to have certain boundaries though, I want to have a lot of absentee uh, voting because now that is the tr current trend, but we all have to work together, but it has to be a cut off. We cannot have folks coming in afterwards. That's just not going to work. And I also want to implement any type of new technologies that are available, be it um, whatever new computer program that might make things run smoother. I believe in technology, but I also believe in a nice paper trail. That might be how, because how I practice, I do keep a paper trail because sometimes, you know, technology can go a little bust. But that's the most important thing to just keep those times and those dates just, um, they have to be strict 
for the absentee voters to get their votes back in so they can be counted and everyone's voice can be heard in the election. And also this, just keep up with technology. Thank you. Okay. Comment on any other issue that might improve services in the clerk's office. One thing I can say that would improve service and I will tell the honest to goodness truth, the staff in the clerk's office are actually wonderful. They took care of everything. The only thing I would say that needs to be done is to unfortunately just remove the, the taint of what we have as far as going on with unfortunately of the lack of integrity that was found um, with the current administration there in the office. I don't want to disparage anyone, but we have to know that it starts at the head. If the head, if you look at an office and, and unfortunately or fortunately the clerk is the head of the departments of the election. We keep track of the city council meetings. We keep track of uh, freedom of information. We do all the transactions in the city. And if the head looks like they're under maybe an indictment or having some legal troubles, you have to get rid of that head and restore the balance and get the confidence back because you can't have that in the office. The clerk is too important. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We come to the end and you have a minute to close your closing remarks. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say this, that I strongly believe in the vote. That's our most powerful tool that we have to implement change here. And as clerk, I would also have an, I don't want to use the word aggressive, but a good challenging way to get the young people involved in voting. And I want to use our senior citizens also to help tell about the struggle because we've all had struggles to vote in some way, shape or form. But I really believe the young people are going to be the future and they need to be engaged in voting. And I don't want to give away all my ideas and plans right now, but it does involve the young people taking a more active role and become more engaging to them to get them to vote and also to use my over 20 years of experience with contracts and compliance issues, because I ran my own office. I didn't have, I have a manager, but I oversee the manager. So I understand what it is to have your name and your reputation on the line. So that's what I want to restore that. And you can check my reputation. It's impeccable. And I don't want to brag, but thank you so much for having me here. And that's all I want to, that's all I have for you today. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Very Thank good. Thank you for having me. To the next portion of our interviews, the uh, for can candidates for South Hill City Council, they are Lloyd Cruz, Ryan Scott Foster, Charles Hicks, Jason Hoskins, Michael Ari Mandelbaum, Robert Vance Patrick, Jay Reed, and Lenny Taylor. We will begin with the first candidate, uh, Lloyd Cruz. Mr. Cruz, you can start with your opening statement. Yes. Um, good evening again, and thank you. League of Women's Voters for allowing me to have an opportunity uh, to be here today, especially you, Judy, because we went back and forth a few times and uh, but we got it right. Um, I'm here again seeking uh, your support uh, as I have in years past. And um, as you already probably know, or many of you know, I've been on the council now for uh, close to eight years and uh, actually serve as the longest serving member on the council at this time. It's changed tremendously in those eight years. And uh, in that time, I've also served two years as the president pro tem and two years as president um, of the council as well. Uh, along with serving on various subcommittees like the legislative committee, uh, the Northland steering committee and um, um, what is it, board, boards and commissions and so, and so forth. So a lot of those things rotate from time to time. So um, I come with a background from, with the admin, educational administration where I worked at OCC. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry your time's up for that, but you can pick that up in your closing remarks. I'll pick that up. Well, now yeah. we're at question one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? Well, um, as I said, um, I've been chair of the Northland Steering Committee uh, 
and to the point which we just sold it um, just just a month or two ago. And uh, what we can do at this point is kind of limited um, because now the property belongs to uh, another entity where we belong, where we held the property before. But what we can do and what we have done is uh, use zoning requirements to help make sure that uh, the type of property that was uh, agreed upon in terms of what will be coming to that area in terms of mixed use development, um, shopping, uh, housing, uh, restaurants, that all those things will come to fruition. And so, um, and we're willing to work with them in terms of tax abatements uh, to give them a little leeway uh, as they're trying to put this huge project together. And uh, I think Contour is one of the, is a, was a great choice for us. Good, thank you. Now we're at question two. What can be done about improving roads and attracting new residents? Well, in terms of roads, I think what can be done is um, we, we have to work harder at building our relationships with the state and with federal government. And so um, that means working through our state reps and senators uh, like Kyra Harris and Jeremy Moss, um, and even with the governor for that matter. Also uh, with Brenda Lawrence, our um, United States representative who's a resident of Southfield and always, is, always cares about what's happening here. And uh, for grant money or any type of funding that could be available. Um, the last thing that we did that was very huge was Southfield went to the people next for a $99 million bond initiative that they passed. And there's plenty of work that is taking place right now. And uh, we just have to be patient with it and, not, and be under the understanding that we live in a state that um, needs constant repair in its roads because of the weather and the traffic that comes through here um, yeah. on daily. Right, okay, thank you. Question three, comment on any budget, climate or public safety issue that is important to you. Um, well, I'll start with one public safety one. And that came from our current chief, uh, which dealt with how um, police officers handle uh, individuals that they come into contact with. And, you know, this came from the George Floyd incident where uh, police officers were watching what was taking place at that point in time. And he has implemented an idea, a concept of a duty to intercede and um, which caught a lot of traction. And, and so I think that's one of the ones that uh, I want to maintain um, here, here in the city. Um, I'm all about sustainability of the city, uh, whether it's energy, whether it's economics, whether it's education, all those things create a sustainable society. So, um, you know, recycling is going to be something that I want to continue to to push more people to do, uh, maintain our school systems and um, things of that nature. Okay, thank you. Now we're at the end and you have another minute to for your closing remarks. Okay, um, again, given my past track record, I think that it sort of speaks for itself. Um, again, I when I was starting off, I was just kind of going to give a quick background on my educational experience. Uh, I have two degrees in political science and a doctorate degree in educational leadership and policy studies, and also attended Harvard uh, for a certificate in um, creating public good. And I brought all that to the table with me. I think it makes me somewhat uniquely qualified to continue to hold this position. Um, like I said, I've been reelected uh, multiple times at this point. And so I want to come back in and continue to do some of the work that we're doing already and maybe even take certain things to higher heights. So I just ask for you to consider me, review my website, cruiseforsouthfield.com. 
and you can learn even more about me there. Thank you very much. We appreciate your participation. Thank you. Our next candidate for Southwood City Council is Charles Hicks. And Mr. Hicks, you can begin with your opening statement. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Charles Hicks. Um, I was raised in Southfield, I stayed in Southfield, and I serve in Southfield. I am running for city council to improve and move Southfield forward. I was elected to the Southfield Board of Education in 2016 and served as president of the school board for the last three years. And I served as treasurer a year before that. I'm a director at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Prior to Blue Cross, I served as the director of purchasing for Wayne County, where I had the responsibility of $1.5 billion in annual spend. I have extensive experience in contract negotiation, management, purchasing, process improvement, project management, innovation, and technology. I will continue to use my variety of skills to improve our city. I am running because I want to attract and retain homeowners, business, prioritize public safety, enhance and add to our city services, as well as address infrastructure challenges with the recent power outages and roads, we have a lot of work to do. Thank you. We got to question one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? Well, with the Northland Development Project, there's gonna be 1,500 plus apartments planned for development. The housing is located in Precinct 22, where school-aged children will be enrolled in the Oak Park School District. Collaborative efforts between local government entities need to work together to change that Precinct 22 requirement. I had hopes that Southfield would have won the bid for a distribution center like, for like Amazon, because it's, with that being a business district, I believe that it would have been better ideal with all of our access to freeways to have something more like that than what we currently have. But living with what we have, we have to make it the best we can and making sure that our children are going to the school district in which they live is important. Okay, thank you. Question two, what can be done about improving roads and attracting new residents? Well, roads contribute to economic development, access to employment, health and education services. Dilapidated roads impede all the before mentioned items. Many efforts have begun to address several main thoroughfares, but many neighborhoods are in desperate need of repair. When I purchased a home in Southfield, the city said, you need to fix your driveway, you need to do a variety of things around your house. I complied, no problem. But I did ask the question, after I fixed my driveway, the road at the end of the driveway needs to be repaired. So I asked them to give me an idea of when that's gonna be done as part of a master plan. I believe that Southfield is in dire need of infrastructure improvement. Council has to lead the charge to work with government entities to seek support in, um, in order to change all the things that are needed to make our city viable not just for now, but for future use. Very good, very good, thank you. Question three, comment on any budget, climate, or public safety issue that is important to you. Well, uh, I believe that we have many hidden gems in Southfield. I believe a marketing campaign needs to be done between the Chamber of Commerce, the city of Southfield, the public school system, encouraging and attracting folk to come live in Southfield. We have many hidden gems that will benefit those who live here. So we just have to market all the things that we have. For example, we have the ninth best high school in the state, 416th nationwide. That more than $40 million annually is awarded to students who graduate from Southfield Public Schools. That our crime rate remains low. That our properties remain affordable. I would love to establish community centers that give residents more activities. You need to have a benefit for living somewhere. So having ability to have either no cost or low cost activities for seniors, for the youth and for families will help encourage folks to come live in Southfield. Thank you. We come to the end and uh, you have one minute for a closing statement. Okay. Well, first I wanna say I am not a politician and I'm not running for city council to become one. I'm a longstanding resident of Southfield. I'm a proud alum of Southfield Public Schools. I left Southfield Public Schools to go to University of Michigan Ann Arbor. Then I returned back to my community that helped me succeed and gave me the strong foundation that I have in community as well as through my employer. I'm not using city council as a stepping stone for a political career. 
I have a job and I love my job. It provides for my family. As I served as president of the Southwood Board of Education, I also served as the president of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I also, at the same time, served as treasurer for the Southfield Lathrop Village Democratic Hub. I've been placed in leadership roles professionally and in community. They all couldn't have gotten it wrong. I wanna bring my experience and leadership to city council. I was raised to inspire service to the public's interests. As a servant leader, I want to continue giving back to my community. I'm not running because I believe that the city is falling apart or that council has done something wrong. I believe that all things considered, we live in a pretty good city. My goal is to make it an amazing city. I wanna help improve Southfield and move Southfield forward. The decisions we make today are going to significantly impact the viability of Southfield for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming and we appreciate your participation. We've come to the next candidate for Southfield City Council, Jason Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins, you have a minute to open opening statement. All right, thank you. And I want to thank the league for putting on this event. Uh, of course, I'm Jason Hoskins. I'm actually the newest council member in Southfield. I was just elected in 2019. And, you know, I never thought I'd be in elected office, but uh, I didn't know I'd be in public service. And I, I've dedicated my, my professional career to it. I studied it in school. I got my, my bachelor's in political science, my master's in public administration, and went on to get my law degree. And um, I've also been serving Southfielders uh, in the state legislature. I, I work, I currently work for our state Senator, Jeremy Moss. And well, part of the reason why I ran in 2019 and why I'm, I'm running for reelection now is because I want to make sure that we were using every resource, every funding source, every tool, um, uh, at, at certainly at the state level, um, every tool in Southfield to be able to attract and retain people to our community, uh, make sure uh, we had tools for uh, housing for people who want to come into our city as well as people who want to age in place and make sure we had uh, the tools and the resources to make sure we were able to do big transformational projects like the Northland project that we're working on. So I think we're doing it. We're laying the groundwork for it. And I think Southfield is going to be a place that people really are going to want to come and live and work and play. Thank you. Okay. Question one, you sort of mentioned it. How can the city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? Well, I think the city has been doing a great job uh, in that so far. Uh, we've been able to leverage those tools um, and those resources that I kind of touched on uh, in, in my opening statement. Um, you know, I, I know I helped advocate for uh, $26 million in investment from the state um, to help clean up the Northland site. Um, uh, I've worked on legislation, uh, something called the Commercial Rehabilitation Act, which uh, is kind of a tax incentive to help uh, with big projects like North commercial projects like Northland. And so I, the city has been really good at making sure they know uh, what tools are available. And I sure, I've certainly been able to help guide them as well and making sure that when we have something like Northland, which is going to be transformational, it's going to you know, I'm, I'm sure other people have talked about it, <laughs> how, you know, so many housing units and so many uh, restaurants and retail, which we hear about that we need more of all the time. Um, I, I think we've been very good at making sure that we use every tool in our disposal and that's how we can be able to help continue to develop, uh, to support that the Northland development. Thank you. Question two, what can be done about improving roads and attracting new residents? So, I mean, we uh, approved the bond in, in 2016 to, to fix every local road in the city. And we spent, I mean, almost $255 million on it and it wasn't, even, it wasn't enough. And so what the city has been really good at is making sure that we leverage every state and federal dollar where, you know, it's the big infrastructure package that was gonna be coming down and we're hoping that we can really leverage that uh, in the city. I mean, we also just approved uh, 1.5 million in street and sidewalk repair in August to make sure we take care of our local roads. Um, but and on the attracting and uh, attracting new residents, I think Northland is going to really help with that. I also think that we need to really develop our own downtown space. Um, and I've been working hard on that uh, uh, in the city. I, it's going to be right across the street from City Hall. Uh, and it's something that we really need to uh, 
to have to rival rival some of our sur uh, other suburban cities around us because I always find that self builders take their economic power out of the city and into other places and we can be doing that right here and I think that is something that is really going to help uh, attract those people to our community like it does in those other communities. Thank you. Now we've come to question three. Comment on any budget, climate, or public safety issue that is important to you. Um, I want to touch on public safety because I think we do public safety uh, very well here in Southfield. Uh, I think we're smart about how we police. When things were going on last year with uh, incidents with the police and people of color, police being uh, police. Uh, deaths involving people of color, um, we made sure we were deliberate and thoughtful about how we were going to do policing here in the city. And so we we ban choke holds, we, we have body cameras, um, there's a duty to intervene uh, policy that we put in place, we require de-escalation, de um, we created a high risk response team that deals with domestic violence uh, victims, as well as the uh, the uh, perpetrators of domestic violence and a specialized training. Uh, we're very thoughtful at how we're doing public safety. Crime has gone down in the city. I mean, uh, for the last 10 years, certainly crime has been going down. And I, I want people to know it's because we are smart. Um, we, uh, we, we look at public safety to make sure we're doing everything right. It's something I think about. I was part of the ACLU uh, of Michigan, and so I'm certainly thinking about criminal justice and how that affects people in our community. Very good. Thank you. And we come to the end, and now you have a minute for your closing statement. Um, again, I, I, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for putting on this event. Uh, that four minutes went by so fast, so I <laughs> Uh, I just want to say that I would be honored to serve again as your city councilman. I think we've uh, really been laying the groundwork here in the city to make this a, a wonderful place to live. Um, and I think I've been doing a good job. Uh, I think uh, I think there have been people, uh, community leaders that Southfielders trust who have supported my campaign, like our state senator, of course, Jeremy Moss, our state representative. Kyra harris Bowden, and all my colleagues on council, uh, the mayor and uh, Mayor Ken Seiber and, and our Congresswoman, uh, Brenda Lawrence, have all supported my campaign. Um, so I hope that the uh, residents of Southfield also support my campaign and, and vote for me uh, November 2nd, or uh, if you're voting absentee, um, before then. So thank you so much. Well, we thank you for your service and for participating in the interview. Thank you. The next candidate for Southfield City Council is Michael Ari Mandelbaum. And Mr. Mandelbaum, you can begin with your opening statement. Thank you. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for having this uh, virtual debate or informational session. It's always helpful for voters to understand and know who, they're, uh, who they can vote for. I am Councilman Michael Ari Mandelbaum. I am currently the city council president pro tem. I've been on the city council for six years. I've spent two terms as the president pro tem. And prior to that, I worked for uh, seven years on the Southfields Total Living Commission, working to improve the quality of life for residents. My family and I have lived in Southfield for a combined 26 years. And I know the city well. And one of the favorite, my favorite things to do in the city is take my children to different parks and playgrounds. And so I'm very passionate about that. And that's one of the goals that I really want to work on is making Southfield a more family friendly place. I have a bachelor's degree uh, and a master's degree in business administration from Wayne State University and a graduate certificate from Lawrence Tech University right here in Southfield. Okay, thank you. Now we're ready for question one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? The Northland uh, Development Project is, is going to be monumental. I currently sit on the Northland Steering Committee um, as a subcommittee of the city council. And we have worked with our partners in the state um, to get more grant funding and help for to build this 100 acre property. There's going to be Hudson's, City Market, which is going to have home furnishings, restaurant entertainment, there will be an outdoor amphitheater. As a city council member, we get continuous updates of what they're planning. 
Uh, just today, we've heard that there's additional interested developers and, and businesses that want to join in in this development. There's going to be uh, 1,300 new apartments being built. We are, we are working on uh, making sure that the project stays current. Hopefully, by the end of next year, there will be additional um, they will have some of the buildings open. The city is actually having a groundbreaking uh, on October 7th at 4 p.m. Um, just to show everyone that we are getting started. There's been demolition done. This will be a monumental change to the city and is currently the largest home residential program uh, building <clears throat> program that is being done in the state. Very interesting. Thank you. Question two, what can be done about improving roads and attracting new residents? In um, Southfield has currently led the uh, county of Oakland in road improvement for the last uh, last few years. We are spending a combined over a one hundred and sixty five million dollars on road improvement that includes new water lines, sewer lines. We're taking away all of the lead lines if there are any in the city. We also make sure to, that we leverage federal and state grants that help. The $165 million that I mentioned earlier does not even include the federal and state grants. So we are making sure that we utilize every dollar possible. And we have to attract new residents, as I mentioned, Northland is gonna have 1300 apartments and multiple, multiple different price points. They wanna attract entry level employees to CEOs of Providence Hospital. We are working on rehabbing several vacant buildings, including, including school buildings, turning those empty buildings to adaptive reuse and making those homes, making those condos. We are trying to find the, every place we can to increase home ownership in Southfield. Thank you, very good. Question three, comment on any budget, climate or public safety issue that is important to you. Uh, that that is that is very tricky. There's a lot of uh, things that are very important to me. Public safety is very important. Um, <clears throat> after the George Floyd incident, uh, our police chief came out and had the first of its kind uh, duty to intervene, where every police officer will be held accountable if they see another officer doing something wrong and do not stop it. Uh, it has been modeled throughout the entire country as a uh, best practice in our police department. Um, community policing is a big one also. We have a lot of police officers who are doing a lot within the community, and I'd like to see that continue. Um, citywide within the city employees, we are working to hire a manager of diversity, equity, and inclusion to help train employees and do public in public training as well. So all Southfield residents understand the diversity in Southfield, which we are known for, that we get along, we have great diversity. Uh, parks is another one that is very important to me. As I mentioned, I have a lot of young, I have young children. We enjoy the parks. We wanna make sure that there's free activities. We're working to build basketball courts and baseball courts, baseball fields, I'm sorry, in many of the different parks. So there's opportunities for everyone, including updating a lot of the park equipment. Thank you. Now we've come to the end and you have another minute to wrap it up. Thank you. As I mentioned, my name is uh, Michael Ari Mandelbaum. I am the current city council um, president pro tem. I have been on the city council for six years. I have worked in the, I have worked within the city as a volunteer for seven years prior to that on the total living commission, working to improve quality of life and sit on the city council. I've been able to take that to the next level. As a, as a family man, working, you know, living here, working here, I make sure that I can do whatever I can to help the residents. I'm very responsive. Um, my neighbors see me out. People see me at different parks, stop me. I make sure to get their issues done. I'm also one of the youngest council members, and I work to make sure that we have the proper technology to be more efficient in the city and help our residents, especially in this time where COVID and people are scared uh, or afraid to be out in public and in in very public places, we want to make sure that we can service them from the comfort of their own home. Southfield also has an aging community, and I'm proud to continue working with the Commission on Senior Adults to get an AARP designation for the city as a age-friendly community. So please vote for Michael Ari Mandelbaum. Thank you. Thank you, and we really appreciate your participation. Next candidate for Southfield City Council is Jay Reed. 
And Mr. Reed, you can start with your opening statement. Hello, good evening. Um, like you said, my name is Jay Reed. I'm running for Southfield City Council. Um, three things that I'm standing on is unity amongst our community, um, as well as fighting for our youth and families, bringing more um, activities to our city. And I'm also fighting for our seniors and those who live in apartment complexes. Okay, thank you. We're gonna go to question one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? Well, the Northland Development Project is very important. One, it's kind of been in longstanding, um, no action has been taken in a couple of years. As you can see, the first thing that we have to do as city officials and as a city is listen to the residents, see what they want to go there. We propose the Northland Redevelopment Initiative that a lot of our residents have received. Um, but the second thing that I would say after that is invite local businesses, um, businesses that we want to see come to the city as well. Uh, we have a lot of local businesses that would love a new location or would like to expand. And I believe that the Northland development project is a necessary way to bring these businesses in, grow, and then further our infrastructure and our economics here in Southfield. Okay, thank you. Thank now, you. question two. What can be done about improving the roads and attracting new residents? Well, um, a couple things. So I do work with the city, so I have a lot of background information um, throughout the years. I would like to continue to work with the state of Michigan because there's a lot of confusion on which roads are owned locally and which are state roads. Um, but there's still that united front. When I talk about unity, that's part of um, that's part of that reason, as well as I would like to work with our city administration, the rest of my colleagues on council, to raise more awareness to roads that really um, need a higher priority than others. But as we go down that list, we'll be able to keep tabs throughout the years to see the wear and tear. And lastly, I would like to um, use better materials that last longer that other communities, other states, other countries use, especially in our winter seasons, so that these roads last longer than just the standardized three. Okay, good, thank you. Question three, comment on any budget, climate, or public safety issue that is important to you. Um, just to go down the list, our budget here in Southfield, we have a high tax bracket where our our residents pay so much. And so I'd like to see more, if they're gonna be paying these high dollar um, in taxes, I'd like to see more activities coming so that they're getting more bang for their buck. I'd like to see code enforcement really utilizing um, their structure in order to keep our apartments up to code so that the tax bracket that I just talked about stays, um, stays legit so that our citizens are receiving the help that they need when they need it. <clears throat> the climate, um, as we move forward, especially with international climate change, um, I want to work with outside organizations in order to see um, solar panels put on houses and our businesses and our economics continue to uh, grow in that regard, as well as public safety, just ensuring that we have proper sidewalks on our streets for kids. And um, when, they, when they're dropped off from school and when they're playing with their parents, they have that safety zone. So those are just some of the ideas that I have. Okay, Thank good. You. Thank you. Now we're at, question, at the closing statement. You have one minute to wrap it up. Well, um, again, my name is Jay Reed. A little bit of background. I'm a Southfield grown student, resident, lifelong, everything. I went to Southfield Public Schools. I've worked in the Southfield Public Library, the local elections for the past four years, and now I'm running for city council and I work as the administrative assistant for the city. But with all of that being said, I believe that I have the stature, the the humbleness and the drive to continue to build our infrastructure and our economics and also see a smile on everyone's face at the end of the day that we're working for the people, not for the money. So thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity. Well, thank you for participating. We really appreciate it. 
And last but certainly not least is Lindy Taylor. And Ms. Taylor, uh, could you please start with your opening statement? Yes, good evening. Hello, my name is Lenny Taylor and I am the current council president and I'm running to be reelected to the Southfield City Council. I have lived in this city for over 30 years. I work here, I worship here and I serve and I, and I shop here. I have served on the library board, the planning commission and I currently serve as the council president. While on these boards and commissions, I have worked closely with the mayor, council and administration on the city's master plan planning and zoning for Northland and Southfield sustainability. This has been a 10 year journey for me and I want to continue my service on city council with these three main issues, transparency, sustainability and safety. I am Lenny Taylor and I am tailor made for Southfield. Transparency is the fundamental principles of trust in government and Southfield can do a little better to inform our residents on what our government is doing. Residents should know and be able to know where their tax dollars are being spent. And one of the ways that we can do that is by expanding availability of services and information across multiple mediums. While we're working on transparency, we also need to continue with sustainable Southfield and build a city that works for all of us. Our master plan and codes need to reflect the city that we want to have 10, 20, 30 years from now. And okay, we need your time is up, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. All right, Thank we get you. to question one. How can city government enhance and support the Northland Development Project? Thank you very much. The sale of the Northland Mall property in July represents a new day and a new era in Southfield. And we will transform the Greenfield Road Eight Mile Lodge Service Drive Corridor. And that developer has also adopted the Northland Master Plan. My vision of Northland includes mixed use projects, housing and business working together in a walkable, sustainable community with dining, shopping and entertainment for everyone. This has been a full team effort from Southfield leadership, business groups, residents and local municipal constituencies and shows that alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Thank you. Now what's question two? What can be done about improving roads and attracting new residents? My priorities are to attract development in the city that creates jobs for our residents so that they stay here and for the city to offer affordable housing for young families and for our seniors to age in place. I will ensure that we use the approved road bond funds to repair our roads, streets and sidewalks using quality materials while seeking additional grant funding from the state and federal governments to ensure the sustainability of our road work and our repairs. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've come to question three. Comment on any budget, climate, or public safety issue that is important to you. Well, as I stated earlier, my top goals are transparency, sustainability, and public safety. Transparency by sharing information with residents and by televising as many meetings as possible, including our planning and ZBA meetings. Sustainability by protecting our property values, by using quality materials on our streets, our roads and sidewalk projects, and by allowing for mixed use development projects and public safety by continuing to invest in top notch equipment and technology for our police, fire and EMS departments. Thank you. We've come to the end and now you have a minute for closing statement. Thank you and thank you to the League of Women Voters for having this interview with me tonight. I am Lenny Taylor, your current council president seeking re-election to the Southfield City Council. My platform includes transparency by sharing information with residents, sustainability by using tax dollars responsibly, and voting for development and housing that offers jobs and affordable housing to our residents, and public safety by investing in our roads, streets, and sidewalks, and the state-of-the-art equipment for our police, fire, and emergency responders. I am asking for your vote on Tuesday, November 2nd, so that I may continue to serve you and the city of Southfield. I am Lenny Taylor and I am tailor made for Southfield. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your participation. Thank you. Also on the ballot, but not with us tonight is Ryan Scott Foster and Robert Vance Patrick. We wanna thank the candidates for their participation. Remember, there are two candidates for mayor, vote for one, two candidates for clerk, vote for one, and uh, eight candidates for city council, vote for four. 
For further information on these candidates, check the league website for our voter guide at lwvoa.org and vote411.com. Rebroadcast of this forum will be on YouTube and the League of Women Voters website. The League of Women Voters is funded by contributions from voters and businesses and concerned citizens. Our membership is open to men and women over the age of 16. Remember to vote on November 2nd. Democracy is not a spectator sport. Thank you.